morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good. Watching watching crew dance around the five day here. It's triggered. It triggered. But I, I don't like this one because we already have RTH highs mm -hmm. and we're right in the middle of a balance. So yeah. we're gonna we're gonna let this one go for today. See what they do. And um, we are now into B period. See what the equities do based on. Uh, so I guess tariffs tariffs were initiated last night, but they I, according to that article that you had posted looked like um, it's not actually applied for three weeks. Yeah, you know. So there's it's it's kind of like yeah they're applied but they're not really applied is kind of the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't very clear. Mm -hmm. It gave some wiggle room in there. Yep. So we'll kind of see how they, uh, what they do with all that. <clears throat> and this, this behavior right here in crude is exactly why I didn't take the breakout lower because when you're, when you're in a multi composite area, meaning there's lots of inventory, you know, all in the same place. Um, it, you just, you're going to get false signals, false breaks, and you get chopped around. So we're going to be kind of waiting on crude here a second. NASDAQ set, set to open inside of yesterday's range. Um, it is open inside of yesterday's range. Yeah. It, they got to get above 75.93 to get back up towards that 76.70 area. So I'm kind of, I need to put my pin tool in here. Man, IQ feed is having trouble this morning. Yeah, all the feeds are for some reason. It's having troubles with a couple others. <clears throat> Um, so I'm looking, I'm looking for the NASDAQ to test this level here. We're kind of in between ping pong land between these. And if I would if, have never guessed we would open in here today. Oh yeah. You would have thought it'd been higher or lower. I thought we would have gapped it down or up based on the oh, news. Yeah. Well, they, you know, they did have that push higher overnight. Um, yeah. But then they sold it off about 20 minutes before then midnight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, welcome everybody. Glad to have you with us. Um, so we're just looking at we we're just looking at the equity open. We're, these are uh, currents, well, I'm sorry, these are index futures or commodity futures that we're looking at right now. Um, happy to look at any other products that you want to look at. Uh, these are the products that we look for specifically um, intraday trades in. Um, so you're, you were trading contracts. Futures can be a little bit um, confusing when you get started because um, they don't, each price increment doesn't have the same PL value. So the, this product that we're looking here on the left is crude oil. So it's moving in, in cents. So each penny that it moves is $10 per contract. So, and you know, if they move a, a dollar a day, um, you're looking at $1,000 of potential P&L per contract. On the right, we've got the NASDAQ futures, um, which is, it moves, it actually moves in quarter uh, increments, or we call ticks. And each tick is worth five bucks each point. So from like 75.62 to 75.63, that's $20 in PL. And uh, right now, um, we're doing about 100, 100 points in uh, expected range in the, uh, in the NASDAQ, which represents about $2,000 of PL potential per contract. So um, they're, they're very great products in that. They offer lots of opportunity. Also, <laughs> they offer lots of risk. So um, having a good plan and knowing where you do and don't want to be active at is crucial. And based on where we are, so just kind of give you a heads up where we're at right now. So uh, we're inside the prior day's range in both of these products. So what that's a, that's a sign of is it's a sign of a lack of directional conviction. So you know nobody really wants to place a bet yet on which way we want to like you know, attempt. Um, and crude specifically 
this big green line here, that's denoting where the highest amount of transactions have taken place over the last week. So that, that means that um, they, something just, oh, Vix, Vix just pulled back. Um, that just denotes that um, there's both buyers and sellers there. And um, so you just don't, you just don't know. You don't know what you're going to get yet. So we're, we're hanging out. Um, I've got, I've got decision levels here in the NASDAQ that I'm interested in participating potentially. Um, for example, this uh, 7,500 level down here or this 7,595, which we were above this when I selected it last night. Um, since we opened below it, that becomes kind of a um, headwind to the upside. And uh, so, and then this, this level here, which is called a, a pre-IB bias level, what that's saying is that's, that's kind of above or below that level kind of states who I think has control before we get through the first hour of trade. So you can see we're above that. So we, you know, we still have buyers in, in my plan are in control. And um, if we get below that, then we'd go, eh, uh, maybe a little bit of a shift taking place here. So um, feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A um, or the chat. Uh, everything is welcome. And, and this, is, this is really for you. And if we see a trade you know, show up, we'll, we'll take it. Right now, we're just kind of we're waiting, 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 waiting. We do have a little bit of headline risk today with the tariff stuff. So um, we know that tariffs were announced last night, and, but yet they don't, they don't get applied for a while. So we're, we're kind of waiting to see, you know, expecting probably sometime today we're going to see some kind of news that uh, will announce progress and or not progress. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Cody, Cody has a question. Are we, we doing the NQ breakout in five minutes? Um, I'm not, I don't know about Josh. I'm, I'm probably not. And the reason for that is we've got um, pretty, like we don't really have an open field in front of us. So like if we did the breakout high, we just basically just have to that 7595. And if, you know, we did break out the low, we got the 75 to the downside. I mean, might, might do that one, but um, it's not, it's not as good as if you were like on the edge of a prior days range and then you get the break or, you know, also think about, you know, posture where we are, Cody, like we're below the five day and the 20 day. So like if we got the breakout low, that's pushing us away from, all the inventory and you know again with the headline risk they could snap us back so I, I think I'm gonna be a little more patient today hey Nicholas good to see you buddy patience will be the name of the game today no doubt um, my my you know we very well could just rotate in here and have an inside day again yep Jonathan are you on the boat He's on a boat? Yeah, he's a sailor. Is he? What kind of boat? He is! That's amazing! Wait, what, what type of boat, Jonathan? It's a sailboat. Well, obviously, and, there's uh, lots of sailboats. Is it a monohull? <laughs> or is it, the, oh, okay. is it a... Do you got a cat, or what are you, what are you sailing? Well, listen to you all. Never 30 years. Nice! Nice. Can I ask where you're... Uh, are you in the, uh, the Caribbean right now, or are you uh, in a marina? Since we're not doing anything, we could turn this into a sailing conversation. <laughs> oh, St. Petersburg, sweat. <laughs> yeah, it's a little oh, sticky no, down wait. there. Okay, well, wait a second. You weren't you weren't you in Half Moon Bay in California? So did you, how did you get to Florida? Through the Panama Canal. <laughs> you go through the Panama Canal? <clears throat> yeah. MK, yeah. I, I, I totally agree. Yep. That's why we're being patient. No, 
All right, I am seeing I am seeing a little bit of activity here in crude now. Um, they kind of tested into this into this level, and now we're getting some some good delta. Overall, the so what delta is? Delta is a, a the difference between uh, bid and the ask of um, and, and volume trade on that. It's it's kind of good internal to kind of see you know what's happening underneath price, and uh, including last night's session. We're positive in, in crude about 3,500. Um, that's a pretty, pretty strong buying number. So uh, the longer that we hold above the 6160 area, the greater chance we've got to kind of push out and break. And I've got um, you know kind of 6230, 6280, maybe even the 63 to the upside. So um, we're, we're also, we've only done 43 cents. We averaged 50 cents in the first hour. Um, and we've done, we have done a dollar of range already. If you include the, include the overnight, we're expecting about a dollar twenty one. So uh, that dollar twenty one could get us to sixty two seventy, um, if you add kind of where we are. So we'll see what the, we'll see what they offer. And then if if we trade above, so here's here's the you know the, the trade, and this is one of the trades that we we work with all of our trading community around is if we trade above the first hour's high, we call that IB high extension. And then there's now probability start to kick in on uh, the probability that we would go back and see 61.45 today. Uh, so if we take out the IB high today in crude oil, there's about a 15% chance that we'll go back, 10 to 15% chance that we would see 61.45. So then we're leaning against that to either join the longs or you know, let, them, let them exhaust themselves and then we could you know, fade them. So it really kind of clarifies everything. And we'll look for this trade up to about um, uh, about 11 or about 1 p.m. Eastern at the latest. Um, and then we kind of try to shut stuff down. But so if they give us a, if they give us a chance, if we if we if we finish uh, this first hour in crude here in another 10 minutes and then we trade above the high, which is currently 6190 um, or 90, 91, 92, something like that, then we'll, we will look for. Can we get any pullbacks back towards that 6170 area? To be long, we'll be looking initially for that 6230 um, as a target to the upside. At least I will. That's my plan. Sold the gas burning trawler, bought the sailboat off the Bahamas after. Wow. Wow. Living the dream. Jonathan is a, he's a friend of mine. Um, from here in Northern Colorado. Really great to see you're, see you're doing well, buddy. Well, when you get to the Bahamas, ping us, because I'm heading down then. <laughs> Jed, you like Jonathan. He's, he is a, he's a great guy. Hopefully you're hitting the egg, uh, eggs my islands when you're down there. That's our favorite place. Um, I'm going to look, I'm going to rotate through some other products here that are kind of on our radar for today. I'm um, looking at the Dow Jones. Um, you see the Dow here is trading below the, the most traded price of the last five days. That's at 2,600 or 26,000 and then 26,000 or 26,408 is the last month. So we're below value in a lot of ways. So we find a trigger maybe along the mini Dow. I'm also looking at soybeans this morning. We have a WASDA report. So we have an inventory report coming out. You can see that the, uh, most traded price. So we're below value for the last week uh, quite a bit. Um, that report is released at, uh, let me check my calendar. Where's noon calendar? Cent, or noon Eastern. Noon Eastern. So um, 11, this is, this is a little inside industry stuff, but all agricultural reports are always quoted in central time. <laughs> That's the that's that's Chicago Board of Trade stuff. Um, I think there's any type of fight between them and the East Coast. Yeah, just like a little in bit. New York. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Um, so we're watching them. I'm trying to think what else is on my. Those were the kind of the two big commodities that were on my my list today uh, to kind of watch. I'll also silver. Um, so you can see they're trading below uh, weekly value. 
so these are these are trades that I'm, I'm more they'd be more position trades I'm looking for you know potential entry so when I say a trigger I'm looking there's a there's a configuration of price that I'm looking I've already identified the target <clears throat> so like if if I got long I'd be looking long here back towards that 1493 I want to find a shorter term uh, trigger where I can keep my risk really tight as I go towards that so I want to see some buying buying spikes coming in that I can lean against the base of that to go towards this uh, 1493. Um, let's see. And then on the stock side, oh, we've got, see, yen is looking short. Um, so no trigger there yet. Um, and then looks like a bunch of emerging markets are, are a little suppressed. So we've got um, the EEM, EWW, Mexico, Mexico, uh, FXI, China. Well, that, that's not a surprise that uh, China's a little bit. Um, that's an interesting, that's an interesting chart there, Jed. Hmm. So I might, I wonder what I could do with FXI. That's not one market I, I actually look at. Um, okay, Jonathan, I'll be heading down, brother. What's the... All right, buyers are stepping in in the NASDAQ to test that 95. So, so my, you know, kind of um, what I'm looking for is if we can get above this 95 area here and extend, you know, trade above that in the first hour, then I'm looking to kind of lean onto that to push toward this 76, 70 area. That's that's weekly value. That's kind of the place that we're looking to um, return to. All things being equal, and we could either like get there in a hot second based on a, a news release because we're we we are seeing, although we you know, we don't we don't often talk about a direct correlation between news and price activity but it's it's pretty clear that when the news is positive on the china thing equities move higher <laughs> and when the news is not positive they go lower so um if all it would take is somebody to come out and say you know we've made we've got a deal and we're going to go to the moon i don't i don't even know that that 76 70 will hold it yeah, and the reason is it's because it's a tariff is like a tax on us because our yeah. goods and services are going to go up and the cost of them, and therefore they're going to pass it down to the consumer. So mm -hmm. um, now it does put the hurt on China, but it also puts the hurt on us. And, you know, tariffs don't um, – when's the last time we actually made large tariff moves? I think it was, it was ages ago, right? Yeah. And back, I, back I think – Back in the Nixon administration. Yeah, and we, I think every – I'm sorry. We, I mean, we we've done that in many administrations, even even in the, under the Obama administration, there were tariffs, but yeah, they haven't been used as they're being used now since the next administration. Yeah, exactly. So, we got the PPT stepping back in today, maybe. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions while we're waiting patiently for something to happen in the in the markets? And if not, I'll just say this is the game right here. If you're new to this or you're wondering why we're not high high frequency trading here or anything, because yeah, that's not the way that it works in the world of trading. Um, you can try that. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it because it'll probably drain your account in um, in more than one way. Yep. Um, but you know, your job as a trader is to uh, wait. It's, I can't, I can say it's sometimes maybe a boring job. Um, but um, if the byproduct of waiting and being patient is you get good setups and um, you know, we had some yesterday, really good ones yesterday. Um, the, I didn't get as much as some people, but we had some guys that got, um, we had 80 banger on there yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, so yeah, you just, you're patient, um, wait for it, and something happened. Friday's a little shorter though. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing much after twelve noon Eastern, so it's usually a short day. Um, 
But yeah, this is the game right here. We usually talk about silly things and wait for something to happen. <laughs> talk about going to the Bahamas with Jonathan. That's, that's right. You know? Yeah. So, so if anybody's got any questions, go ahead and pop them in here. Let's answer yeah. some questions while we're waiting. Sure. And um, I'll, I'll answer a question. Maybe somebody's asked this. So in terms of like how many trades do we look for a day? I mean, typically in, so like, you know, I, I look for a day trade in both crude and NASDAQ. And I typically find one trade in each of these products a day. Um, and it's, and I would call it intraday swing trading. So, you know, uh, if, you know, out of that, whatever that range of the day is, I'm trying to find a spot where I can um, have a good probability of picking up about 25% of the range of the day. If I get 25% of the range, then I feel really great. That also allows me to adjust based it on what the available range is. So, you know, like right now, if the, if the NASDAQ is expecting 100 plus points, I, you know, I want to net about 25 points today. Um, if crude is, you know, about a dollar, I want to get about 25 cents. So that would be, you know, $250 per contract uh, in crude, and that would be um, about uh, 500 bucks per contract in the NASDAQ. Um, so, you know, and, and it's, those opportunities will be there if you're patient. Again, because we've talked about the risk, if you just put on a trade thinking that you have something when you don't yet, um, all of that other range can go against you and uh, you can be out of, out of business pretty quick. So um, yeah, there's some people that are like, you know, scalp, we're not scalpers. So we're not looking for, you know, little bitty price increments. We're looking for, you know, larger price movement that we can lean against. And we're, you know, trying to express risk around that. And then we're also looking at, you know, multi-session swing trades. Uh, so some of those other products I pulled up, you know, like soybeans or the Dow, those are ones I'm looking to carry maybe, you know, maybe not just today. Maybe, I mean, maybe they do go to the target today, but if it doesn't, it'd be like, you know, today or into next week. Um, but that, that's just, you know, people who, there's all these perceptions around day traders, right? That's like, you know, you, you basically are just in and out, in and out, in and out, and constant activity. And there are certainly guys that do that. Um, I don't have the heart, like literally don't have the cardiac capacity <laughs> for that. Um, so this, uh, I'll also say there's not too many of those guys around anymore. Um, the, and, and they just don't, I mean, literally if they are, they're not going to last long. I mean, even the, I know three guys that scalp yep. when I say scalp, they're scalping the ES for three, four ticks mm -hmm. and they're uber successful. And here's the funny thing. They take about three trades a day. Yeah, because you're waiting for those optimal times. Now, wh now, when you when somebody asks me that question, how many trades do you take a day? Um, how come you only take one or two a day? Um, well, first, let me answer my question. I will usually get one or two trades in a day. This week, I had one day I had no trades. Um, but then, if the the market's swinging and we got wide wide ranges, oh, I can get three of them in, four of them in easily. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it also depends on if my, my setup shows up, if my plan plays out. Um, if it doesn't, then just like this week, it was, there was not a for us. Mm -hmm. um, I think Josh, that day you had one trade maybe, I think it yeah. was. Yeah. Um, me, I had nothing. I passed on everything. Um, the, of course there wasn't anything to pass on. <laughs> That helps, but um, you know when when people are looking for number of trades, it tells me that they're a small lot trader because they're looking to make money. Um, I would ask yourself more importantly, how many times does my setup show up in the day? Okay, and if it's only once, or if it's once every two days, hey, that's fine. Okay, what you're looking for is consistency out of the markets. You're not looking for, well, can I make 1500 bucks a day? Well, sure you can. Throw 20 contracts on there. We'll get you to 1500 bucks quickly. But <laughs> you better have two things, the, the know-how to do it, um, the bankroll to do it, and when your hand starts shaking because you have 20 contracts on, on there, um, be able to manage yourself going through that process. So it's, you know, the idea is to start small, be consistent, focus on executing your your plan rather than looking at the money and then build your contracts up from there and then it won't matter how many trade setups you have because mm -hmm. you're going to have i mean if the, some of the guys that we know there's some really big traders out there i mean guys that are swinging 60 60 contracts on the es that's that's pretty big guys um you do the do the tick value on that it's 50 dollars a point um, times 60. So if it goes against you one point, 
you know, <laughs> that, that gets your attention real quick. Yeah. Um, so you, you got to know what you're into and stuff, but I would on a regular basis, <clears throat> excuse me, on a daily basis, I would focus more on does my, my plan or my trade setup actually show up and how many times does it, that's going to give you that answer. Now, if you don't have a trade plan or a, um, or a setup, then I suggest you probably do that first. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anybody else got any questions? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? All righty. Look at the indexes here. Let's. There's not much going on. They're back at the open. Yeah, everybody. Everybody's are going to probably go test down below the open, and and then if they don't find more sellers down there, they'll rotate it back up. And by twelve noon, I'll be like, okay, it's time to go for the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guys, I. I, I a lot of, sorry, Josh. So a lot of the guy, you guys, I, I understand you guys are, uh, some of you guys are probably looking to make this a career, trying to switch out of something. And we all were at one time. And I remember when I, and Josh, you probably did this as well. You, you were like, okay, where's my trade? Where's my money? Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I can honestly say in today's environment, I, I was just telling my wife this and, and my wife was a trader as well. She didn't trade anymore. Actually, I said it. It's funny, Josh. I said that to her last night. And she looked, gave me that ugly eye again. You know, oh, it's no. just like, yeah, no, dude, that's your job now. Okay. Oh, um, so I was like, you know, I, what really has changed for me as a trader is now I just look for op opportunities to pass up on. Okay. Yeah. Like this morning we passed on the crude break. Yeah. That's just not working for me. You know? Mm -hmm. That's just not a good trade. I'm not going to take that. Anyway, my younger self, you know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, oh man, I'm on, on top of that. And then I would have stopped out and then on my, my, my heightened sense would say, okay, where's the next trade? Okay. <laughs> Let's get that. Oh, look, okay. We're back above the open. I'm taking it long here, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and you're just ping ponging back and forth. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm getting older, but holy cow. Now I'm like, what am I doing today? I'm looking not to take a trade today. Okay. I know that sounds stupid. I just, so, and, and when you talk to people, they're like, God, that's, how do you make money? Oh, you can make money, Yeah. but you just have to be patient with it and find your trade. And I think Josh and I finally, after many years, and this is why we do this now is to help you guys try to get past it. Cause there's a lot of pain getting to this point. Believe me, uh, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of tears and a lot of years. And, um, um, you have to get past that point. Um, and if somebody can help you with that learning curve and, and make you understand really what it is to be a trader, um, you know, it's worth it. Believe me. Um, I didn't, I didn't really have it. Um, Josh, I know you didn't have it. So, and I think that's when we said, you know, there's gotta be somebody who can freaking tell us this kind of stuff and help us out because it is, I mean, Josh has, has had a nose cleaner in his life and I've had a nose cleaner in my life. If, if anybody's been around long enough, they've most likely had some pain in there. Yeah. Um, hopefully not to the tune that both of us have had it, but you know, cause it, believe me, there's no badge of honor. <laughs> You're like, yeah, man, I blew out my $500,000 account. No, there's no badge of honor in that, man. I, um, you know, I, first of all, I'd never did that. Okay. Um, but I've had some nose cleaners out there, but you know, you don't want to be going around thumping your chest 10 years from now and you, yeah, man, I had to lose all my money to get where I am today. No, you know, you don't. Okay. That, that reminds me of a conversation in an interview somebody did with Elon Musk and he was mm -hmm. talking about at, at the, at the time, and you can still find, you know, aspects of this is where, uh, people will say that you need to fail to learn. So, you know, almost like embracing failure as a, as a mantra, you know, like embracing yeah. failure. And, and he, he's like, he's like, that's, that is a ridiculous statement. Like, I mean, to, to want to fail <laughs> as a, no, no, no. The idea is to not fail. That, that's the idea remains not to fail. Um, it's just, how do you deal with the failure when it's going to occur? You know, it's going to happen. So how are you going to deal with that? And, you know, just. 
which is kind of funny. Yeah, but what is failure? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. What is failure? I mean, it, failure is when you quit. That's failure. I mean, you, you're going to have, you're going to scab your, um, your skin, your knee up and stuff like that a few times. Um, you will still do it today. You will take a, a trade and you go, why did I take that trade? It's not in my plan. Yeah. Okay. Um, we got is that failure? That are, I think these, oh, are, these are related to this. So right, Ivan, you're, you, yeah, Ivan, you said like, what are, what are you looking forward to taking a trade? I mean, what price do you need, you know, to take a trade? So um, let me, let me kind of walk you through my plan for, for example, for the NASDAQ today. So um, we're, we're behaviorists. So we watch how the auction behaved yesterday to give us some potential insight into the next day. Okay. So um, we opened with what we call a gap lower, meaning we, you know, the, the, the session opened completely outside the range of the prior day. So that's a, that's a basically saying we had conviction to the downside yesterday. And then we, we early, we pushed on lower yesterday. And then we got this flurry of buying that came in mid session, took us back through the open, closed the gap and, and closed the session in range of the prior day. So, so th again, think what happened behaviorally. We, opened lower. So all the participants were like, yep, we're, we have conviction to go lower. And then others tried to join them and couldn't, couldn't go with them. And then they all gave up and we saw a new, a new flurry of buying coming the other way. So there's a, ch there's a turn of hands happening in the auction. So as I come into today, we, we continued that overnight where we traded higher. So, um, the, the shift of hands where we, we came into the session yesterday with sellers really kind of owning the auction and it flipped to the buyers. Today, we kind of came in with the buyers and now we're kind of testing that. So I was, I'm looking for places to, to buy the auction today, unless, <laughs> um, depending on a, on a couple different situations, if, if we saw some real strong selling showing up that we could join with that. But also you'll notice that like on the NASDAQ, we're trading uh, below my, um, as, as well as the ES, we're trading below this, this level. Now, what this is, is this is, you know, we basically have retraced back through half of yesterday's cash range. So that's, that's saying that those buyers weren't strong enough to hold that up. And so, you know, now um, there's a couple things that I might be looking for. We have some volume down here at 7505 that if we come back to this level, I'm expecting the auction to test and rest a little bit. I may potentially look for a long, you know, entry here, if we can hold this level. And if so, then, you know, the question is, well, where's my target? What am I looking to, to trade toward? Currently today, we have an area of volume right up here, back around the open. Um, so that that's going to be kind of my first target. Um, if, if we were to hit this here in the first hour, um, you know, this could be my first target. And then we could, you know, have open up these higher ones. If we get done, uh, with this next 30 minute period and then we extend lower in the next 30 minute period which we call c period then i've now reduced the probability that i would see trade above 7588 to about a 30 percent probability and that's based on measured behavioral statistics for the last five years um, and then i could still look to be long here but I, I really don't have a very good expectation that we'll see 7595 or higher today unless we would have a news event and a news event could shift shift everything. That's one one scenario that I'm looking at. If if we come back, say we don't get down here to 7505, if we come back and trade to um, 7595 above this high here, then what I'm going to be looking for. Um, Then what I'm going to be looking for, so say if we, if we come back and trade up here, then I'm going to be looking for pullbacks to this current volume area to look to be long here and here. So it's either I'm looking for the trade down to here, and we got to hold this, rotate back up into here. And if we don't hold this level, um, I have another decision level here. I also have decision levels here and here any any of these uh, now i will say if, if we start to get into this territory uh given the amount of range that we've already done so if, you know from the high here at 7652 um if you get down here to uh 70, 70 so 7552 so we're already um 
we said expected range was 100 points, 113 points. So we've already done 130 points. So we, so we're, we're already exceeded the expected range of this product for today. So if we get down here, then that's telling me that there's some really big sell programs and I'm probably gonna leave this alone and just not touch anything until next week. So that's, that's my plan. Yeah, so there's a couple other questions here. Um, MK says, ES is at value or low, not trading it. Um, that's not one of my trades, so no. Um, so, I mean, if it's in your trade plan, then you should probably, you know, look at the parameters and if that fits, then yeah, you should probably trade it. Um, um, Nicholas, wouldn't you say that those series of frequent trades you had uh, given you the experience of knowing when to trade versus if you had patient taken fewer at the start? Um, yeah, if you learn from it, if not, you just end up not being in trading the rest of your life. That's the hard part. And but the other thing, it's painful to do it that way. It takes you many years to figure it out. Remember, you're changing the way that you think. Mm -hmm. And you really are because, you know, as our brains are developed over thousands and millions of years to be, you know, um, we, we have two ways that we have a fight or flight system in us. Okay. And so, you know, it, that's the way either we run from it, we're scared of it, right? So we, we leave it or we fight. And, and an example is that if you take a trade and you miss, you take out, the first thing you're thinking is how do I get my money back? So you go back in fighting. Um, that, that in trading, that doesn't work. Okay. It may, you may get lucky every now and then, but it doesn't work a long time. It's not a good, a good plan. So mentally, patience is the game. If you can do it off the bat and learn it and understand, you get, you're going to touch the hot stove and get burnt every now and then. You, you will. It's just the nature of the beast. Your brain is never is not – nobody's is, okay? Mm -hmm. Nobody is um, – there's very few people that can just, you know, turn a computer on today – learn a couple things and trade the rest of their life without making mistakes. It just doesn't happen. Um, so what we try to do is eliminate those stakes as, as much as possible. The only reason I'm here today is I'm stubborn as hell. Okay. And I wasn't going to quit because this is what I wanted to do in my life. And most people will, will burn out, um, lose their money, you know, not come back, et cetera, et cetera. I've had friends, personal friends that tried to get into trading, lost money and, and couldn't handle it and left. Um, so it, you know, could they have been successful long-term if they had good guidance and stuff? Yeah, they absolutely can. I can tell you right now, the larger shops in New York and Chicago and stuff that, that have prop shops, it, the good ones, let me just say that the good ones have people sitting there and they're, they're testing them. They're working with them. They're going through the psychology portion of it. They're, they're getting these guys to success early and quickly. Okay. So they don't have to take those those nasty, um, frequent bad trades and, and, you know, yeah. The reason I don't trade past 12 noon on, on Friday is because I've been dinged so many times after 12 noon. <laughs> I finally <laughs> figured it out. I'm not trading after that time anymore. Duh. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but anyway, um, MK says intention equals results on the long run. We could yeah. go test yesterday's low. Yeah, we're right. Yeah, we could true. go test yesterday's low. Um, thanks Nick. Um, so good questions there, real good questions. Yeah, yeah. Anybody got anything else? One one thing that your question, Nicholas, makes me think of um, around uh, you know frequent tw trades, and we've talked about this in in prior Q and A's, is that um, knowing knowing that you're practicing something that actually has a positive expectancy. And this is where I mean, there's all kinds of cool tools out there today, um, like Quant Logic and um, I mean, you could just search like back test trades, like Google that, and you'll find like four or five different sites where you can actually build conditions around price and certain variables to see whether there's positive expectancy around that. So, you know, the, the, the practice thing has to do with like, well, it's like, um, I mean, JP was a, a pro golfer. Um, like he, you work, you work on your swing and, um, there's a, there's a good swing <laughs> and there's a really bad swing, right? So if he practices a really effective swing, then he can be really effective. If he, if he starts by practicing something that's, you know, just completely unorthodox, not going to work, um, it's, it's not going to be effective. So it, the practice, it's, it's like deliberate practice on something that actually will work. 
what often happens when people come to markets because they, 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 they don't come with a, oh, here's, here's the idea that I know has something of substance around it. So that means I can um, lean into that. Then, um, then they, you know, they're just putting on trades without uh, any, any hope or confidence that that thing's going to work. And they may actually be working on the thing and they may see something work and go and the brain, the, the brain logs that as that's an effective strategy. So do that every time those conditions exist. And you could have actually been looking at conditions that if we went back and looked over five years and measured that setup only had like a 15% positive expectancy. Well, you would, you would never have, you would never build a trade around that. Um, but, but it's, it's kind of like you had experienced the coin flip of you'd flip the coin 10 times and landed heads. But if you flip a coin long enough, you know, it's going to be 50, 50. So the, the, without, a lot of samples. So that, that is the challenge is finding that specific one so to that end. I want to, I want to give you one to kind of look at. Okay. So if you, if you feel like I don't, I don't really have something yet to look at. Um, here's, here is just a simple, I, mean, I, I think it's simple. I don't, you, you can be the judge of whether you find it to be uh, simple as well. Um, and, and let me know if, if I'll, I'll be happy to share this template with you and, uh, and help you around that. But, so here's here's a, a five day five minute chart uh, that we, we talked about. We we're looking at the Dow Jones futures, okay? And on the right, I have a histogram that represents the accumulated val uh, volume at price for all the trade of the last five days. And so you can see that big node there at twenty six thousand. Essentially, that's the most traded price. So where are we relative to that? We're below value, okay? So think uh, if you, if you weren't thinking financial markets, if you were thinking uh, if you were thinking sailboats, Jonathan, if all of the other sailboats out there were trading, I, mean, I don't even know what a sailboat trades for. Um, JP, what's a, what's a sailboat cost? I have no idea. Well, my sailboat, the catamaran, 40 foot cat's going to cost you about 350. So I don't know what a mono okay. haul. I can't speak to that. So. Okay. So if, and that's, that, and that's about value, right? So if I say, Hey, I've got one that I could offer to you at 450. You know, you're kind of like, uh, I don't know about that. You know, but if you're like at 175, um, then you know, you you might ask some other questions. Obviously, what's the condition and stuff like that. And if you found out that it was just like in a pristine condition and somebody just had it sheltered and they're just looking to get rid of it, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna snap that up. That's a deal. And the reason that you know that that's a deal is because relative to value. So that's always the question: is where's where's price relative to value? And in the time frame that a lot of traders want to be active at, this is a pretty decent time frame. Is to look at, uh, especially if you're looking for uh, short duration intraday trades. Okay, and so I can see, look at the Dow here, and I'm below value. Now there's a couple other components here. So I've got the profiles for each day. So and this is the full electronic session that's active here, and then um, you can see the the period volume. So this is for each, you know, for the five minute. Uh, period you can see the volume so you can see overall it's been selling volume that's been in control today you know as price has been going lower um, i do have one moving average here this is an eight ema exponential moving average the reason for this is a lot of algorithms look at this uh, you know so if we if you, if you see price move too far away from it you'll see it snap back they'll just kind of hug that but that can also give you kind of a it can smooth out the price action a little bit to let you see where price is kind of heading and then i've got these these it looks like these bands um, and there's a purple band and there's a red band. Okay. So what this is, is this is what we call volume weighted average price. So, you know, as if I go through the, you know, the, the last week, this is a, a way to measure um, where, where is the average price based on volume throughout the week. It's often going to be pretty close to where that five day POC is, the volume POC. Um, and you can see we're trading below that. And then there's these dotted lines above or below. Well, those are two standard deviations above or below for the week. And then the purple band, you can see the volume weight average price for the day, or you know, including the overnight session. And then these uh, these bands above or below. Now, the the algorithms are going to look at that and note just just go back and observe that that how they just hug that two standard deviation. if they poke below this thing. Um, they, they often snap back and there's an opportunity 
that if you see price extend below these two standard deviation you know, spaces and then come back inside that with, with volume in the direction that you'd want to see. So like, let's say for, you know, the Dow right now is approaching this two standard deviations for the, the session, right? And I've, I've talked about that. I'm looking, you know, for a long in the Dow. Well, if I poke below this and come back inside of that and I get strong buying, then I could go with that and I'm looking for, you know, movement back towards my 26,000 target and I'm, I'm going to have a stop directly below the base of wherever that buying started. So I'm going to defend that low. So I've, I've got exactly clear risk. I know why I'm in this trade and I know what I'm defending. And that, that has positive expectancy because these, these machines that are out there running these programs, the, you know, the, you've got these quants and these MIT guys that have been taught, hey, if something is two standard deviations away from a statistical mean, that is a, um, an outlier. And so I, I don't want my program to continue placing trades in that direction. That's a, that, you know, so if they were already short, that would be a place where they would be looking to, to peel it off. And if they were looking for longs, that could be a place that they would look to, to enter the longs. And you know, often they're trading back towards the current day's volume uh, weighted average price. I mean, just look even just at today from, from the Globex session, the times that we you know, hit, and oh, here's, I mean, this is an overnight session, which I don't, I don't do this overnight, but um, it, it still holds. This is kind of the behavior that you would be looking for. So see how here was a, a pop below that to S standard deviation. And then they came back and, and canceled that out um, with buying volume. Okay, now it's really low because it's Globex stuff. But my stop would be right here. Okay, and, and my target would be back to the, the volume weighted average price. And just look at how nice that moved right on back there. Okay. And that's because that's how these these machines, that's what they read and 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 that's what they look at. Um, so, you know, we're kind of getting into that condition here in the Dow. We'll see if that shows up. Now, in conjunction, I've also got a high volume node here at 25, 5, 6, uh, 7. There's a similar one. Um, like, okay, ES is dipping below that into, I've got a decision level here at 28.43. So if if they push through this, turn around and come back with strong buying volume, that's a potential intraday buy for me, and I'd have a stop below that. And I'd be targeting rotations back up toward 2863. You know, in this case, probably more like 2858, which is the current day's um, VPOC. All right, looks like Crude wants to take out the IB low here. So I wanna go back to um, execution here real quick. Um, that golf analogy is pretty good. Um, so there's lots of different swings in the world. Like there's lots of different traders. First of all, there's only a few different types of trades, right? We have a pullback, a go with a reversal, a breakout type of deal. All right. That there's your trades. Um, it's how you trade those. So there's lots of different looks and stuff and feel to that. Just like Josh went through. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that you, that, that net, okay. So the guys out there on tour, let's just use them as an example. Um, they all have different swings. They all look pretty smooth, but the real, the basis of their swing is not, you know, what, if they, I mean, if you look at DJ, his club is white, is super shut at the top, you know, no, no teacher would ever advocate that. Um, but the guy hits at a country mile and can win because at the bottom of his golf swing, the face is square at impact. And when he's working on a lot of stuff, the bottom line is, can you get that face square so you look at dj you look at jim furick you look at tiger woods and you look at um, um adam um uh, what's adam's last name from australia um but anyway those guys have all three different four different swings but they have if you look at them in impact oh they're beautiful but more importantly when they're on the course they execute what they they do which is their golf swing they don't try to come up with okay so dj doesn't try to swing like jim furick out there and Jim Fury doesn't try to swing like Tiger when they're on the course and playing in a tournament. That is huge. Well, looking at the markets and let's, how does that relate to the markets? Well, when you look at the markets, you have your trade setups or your methodology. When you look at the markets, if you go into those and go, Oh, okay. My trade setups are based on a 30 minute chart. Wow. I've got this, I've got this three minute chart that shows a signal. I'm going to take it. Well, guess what? You just tried to swing like somebody else. 
Mm -hmm. And I can tell you how that's going to end up. Not very well. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to do that, anybody who hasn't hit a golf ball in a while, try to go out and swing like John Daly once and tell me where the ball goes. <laughs> it, it ain't going to, it ain't going to be pretty. All right. So if you've ever heard or overheard more importantly, um, caddies talking to their players at the end, they usually give them a thought. And that thought typically has to do with trust it and execute it, okay? In other words, just let it go. Do your thing. You've practiced this thing thousands of times. Just trust it. Mm -hmm. And that's why you, you go out and get the reps, and that's why you develop a plan and you own it. Those guys own their golf swings. And maybe I'm going to age myself here, but um, there's a guy named Ben Hogan out there in the world. If you don't know who he is, go look him up. One of the greatest golfers ever. He's got this most beautiful golf swing, and he never had a teacher. He had never had a camera to work with. He did it by digging it out of the dirt. I mean, that guy went through some serious pain to get to where he was. Okay, that again, there's the pain matter. Now, would he have been able to get better quicker if it – if he had some of that, maybe today he would have, maybe, never know. Um, I would like to believe he would have, um, and, but he, he owned his golf swing. He knew every inch of his golf swing, how it worked, how it ticked, how he delivered into the ball, how the ball came off the face, how he finished, and exactly how many yards that ball would go with what club he had. I mean, that, there wasn't anything that he didn't know. And if you know your setup that well and you're able to execute as well as him, Boy, you got a huge career coming, my friend, a huge career. But if you're bopping around what we call style surfing and you're just trying to find a trade to make some money, I think it could go up and test the open. I'm going to take the trade here and you get wiped out. Um, you know, you, you got to really step back and think about that. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, listen, that's where, that's where the money really is made. I mean, we talk about markets. You're going to see all kinds of advertisement out there. Oh, we just made 300% on this options trade. No, oh, look at me. We're flying around the world in this <laughs> private jet. You know, and um, I, don't, I don't doubt that some people are able to do that because, you know, especially if they're Wall Street traders, they and they're at big firms, they can make some decent money. Mm -hmm. But that's not everybody. Yep. So I, I would highly encourage you. Setups are one aspect of it. But once you get your setup that fits you, your market that fits you, then then you gotta you gotta own it. You gotta learn it. You gotta you gotta put the time in to understand it. What makes that trade setup trigger? What makes you uh, manage your risk or how you manage your risk? What how do you set your parameters, et cetera, et cetera? And how do you know where to exit? Right? When's when's a good time to exit? When's the time to get the the uh, um, the G, what we call the GTFO. Okay. I'm not going to say what it stands for, but you can figure it out. Um, so those are the big things. And if there's anything you can take away from a call like this, take that away and run with it. Cause that, that I will tell you what that advice, um, and it's not advice. That's the, that's the way you're going to make it my friend. Yeah. Miro. So um, he said, said when it comes to trading, if you don't know who you are, then you don't know what you know, doesn't matter. And I mean, he's, he's a fund manager. Yeah, Miro, you're right. I mean, I'm not a fund manager, Miro, so you probably know a heck of a lot more than I do. But um, what I do know is I, I played, I have played some professional golf, yes, and and that's another another day. It was many, many, many moons ago. Um, but um, it there is a lot. It relates a lot to to trading and stuff. And there's certain ways to be successful and, and those two, those, these two endeavors, should I say? Mm -hmm. um, and they, they really are parallel. So, I mean, you can do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. You really can. It, you just got to get some things under control and, and patience, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Patience and passion. That, that, that definitely helps the, the passion, especially now, if you're yeah. doing it for the money only, eh, I don't know how long you're going to last. So. So I'm watching us here at 7504. We're we're we are pausing, kind of holding this zone as expected. Um, we're we're coming up on the uh, the half hour here. If if we can, uh, and it looks like that we'll probably extend that uh, the low. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wait here. Um, we do have what we call single prints up to 49. So we'll see if we can uh, in this next period push it push below the low. We've got 80 points in the first hour. We average 53. So more likely we're going to rotate back and forth today rather than like trend. Um, 
So I'm going to look and see if, if we can push below there, and then I'll look uh, maybe to enter long if we get back above 75.10, looking for 75.50 uh, towards 63. So I just need, I need to wait another six minutes here. But I, don't, I like seeing that we're we're holding this level. That's that's good news. If we had, if we just slice through this, then um, big boys are swinging. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's been a nice sell-off. I have no trades right now, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm still. still and I, I do not. Yeah, when we ping pong in between these areas, uh, I'm just not interested. Yeah. We we don't even have our first. I guess we do have so. Um, IB's just about in here. Yeah, that's probably going to be our best bet is the IB. Yeah, so we're gonna we'll you know we'll uh, stick around here for the next. Uh, let's get if you need to leave at the the half hour here. Um, thanks for joining us. I'll stick around here for just a little bit longer. I want to see if maybe this thing uh, fires off a little bit after we get into C period, and uh, and we can see that and um, try to do something there and. Um, if you have any questions, you can always send us an email at team at tradewithprofile.com. I'd be happy to respond to you. Um, you know, we, if, if you don't have a consistent approach, still trying to figure that out, that's, that's what we do is try to help find that and tailor that to you. So um, talk to us about that. It doesn't cost you anything, you know, because we don't know if we're a fit either. So um, we need to do a little bit of due diligence to know kind of what do you know so far, what's been working, what's not working so that we can um, work on building a plan together. But um, man, don't yeah. pop before. <laughs> Nicholas, yeah, I think we can send you that um, template. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miro, you're trading rice, brother? Dude, he trades, are a, he trades some awesome products. You are a man, because that is a thin market and it takes heart to trade that thing, man. <laughs> Miro, Miro is my, he's my hero. He's my spirit animal. Oh, I used to hedge for rice a lot and it was crazy hard because man, we get traders in trouble and I had to try to dig them out of trouble all the time. Wow. Rice is a beast, man. But I tell you what, if you're on the right side of that trade, you can make a ton of money. Mm, come on, don't pop it. Don't pop it here. You know, this is what they did yesterday. They came in. Well, I was looking for that seventy. I was looking for that seventy-five level yesterday, and and you know was waiting for the extension on the low, and then we didn't. <laughs> and you can see right here, we got buyers. Actually, some pretty decent buyers coming in. Uh, good buying delta, um, right at this level. Uh, so let's we'll see if this holds. This, I mean, it would it it, it would increase the probability I mean, if we trade back through the open. That could mean that we could just run like crazy higher. She's shocked we're not going to go down and take out that low. Come on. Shoot. Yeah, this is the first pullback. I would shock me if they go ahead and just rip it back the other direction. Yeah. I think they'll take another test down there. That would be great. Let's do another one. Uno mas. And crude is still inside of its initial balance. Nothing going on there. Um, so soybeans, I'll look at my soybean chart real quick because we do have that WASDA report. <clears throat> there is one trade that I'm looking for. So soybeans is on my radar because, 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 because. Uh, all the value references are higher in soybeans. Um, actually, I need to update this chart. I think that... Um, Basically, this 829 area. So what I would love to see post the report is I would love to see them. Nope, I said a long zone. That's a short zone. Um, I would love to see them sell off first. So the, the trade that I'm looking for on WASD is I want to see them push lower and then come back into this opening range and hold. And then I want to see him go this way and I will join them for that move. And then I would basically protect 
this, but, but I want, I got to see him go lower first. That's, I want to see him go lower, trap some shorts, and then those shorts not get any follow through. And so think about this, you know, if, if, if you are short a position and nobody else goes with you, the, you know, the last short is the first buyer because they got to buy to get out. And that's when I'll jump in. So we'll watch that. That's, I'll be, that'll be on my radar. Uh, here you go. Here comes this other test. We do have the, the volume point control is here at the very bottom of the range. So expecting some. Um, okay, here comes our IB low extension. Yes, please. Yes, yes. You're so close. So get this on a 30 minute basis here. We're, we're below average volume today. Um, we're about we 30,000 contracts below where we would expect. Yep. Surprisingly, after last night's trade. Yep. All right, come on, take out that low. It's not. Not yet. That would be a very weak low if we rallied from here. Yeah, it would. I would love to go see it done in the 7481. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to do it, though. That, I mean, that, that Delta number is pretty good, though. I mean, that's a pretty good. Yeah, everything's Delta. good. Everything supports this going down at this point. Now, whether they, they do, if they remember, they can turn on an algorithm and rip it back the other direction pretty quickly. You'll know right away if they do. Mm -hmm. Take it out. Please take that IB out. At least test it. Yeah, yeah. Really? Wow. <laughs> this reminds me of yesterday when they were trying to break out, of, uh, go back the other direction towards the um, open. Yeah. And then finally the news came out and they ripped it. But they did. maybe somebody will come out and say, no deal. No deal. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Come on, go down and test that thing. There we go. Test, test, test. <laughs> Golly, it's Friday. They don't even four, want to take it lower. Four, four contracts. That's that's not enough to stop it. They'll go, they'll get lower. There you yeah, go. There it is. There, there it is. is. Now go, we're go. now we're pushing. So look at this on a you know thirty minute basis. So every each thirty minute of the session, we've had lower, low, lower, high. So, you know, I could look for rotational opportunities, but I want to make sure that this thing's not going to trend. Now, it's not likely going to trend because we have such a wide initial balance and we're way past our expected range. Um, but if I can get a higher high on a 30 minute, then I could lean against the low and look for, you know, look for the rotations back up into the profile. These, these single prints here um, are these, there's basically holes here in the profile that I'm expecting at least this area to get you know, filled back in today. This one, maybe not so much. But so now I just, I got to see, I got to see some buying activity. I don't see any on the board. It's all nope. selling right now. All selling so right now. Said, uh, yeah, my, uh, Miro, you're right. Uh, failure to break is one of the best setups. However, in this point, there's nothing to say that they're going to fake this out for, at least for now. I mean, they, I was expecting them to go down and test that, so. And now, right now, the magnet is that uh, that swing low from yesterday at seventy four eighty one. So, and then it looks like they're going to try to get it. I don't know if they're going to get down there. Um, everything is picking up to the downside in my book here. So, and that's a, that's a good point. You know, talking about tempo and picking up to the downside. So, one of the things that we watch is if we see behavior heading in a direction it should lead to further behavior. So, you know, it's picking up to the downside, so that should lead to lower prices. When that doesn't happen, then that's a clue that we're getting ready for a turn. So we're seeing, we're seeing stuff pick up to the downside from the order flow, and, but look at where we've come from. <laughs> so, so this could also trap some people. Um, doesn't mean we step in front of it, but it does mean that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really interested here you know, because if we can't sustain below here and we get back above the 7,500 zone, then um, 
then I've got a, a low that I can lean against as my risk to be long back for rotations higher. But if we can't yeah, get so, back above 7,500, I mean, again, all of this stuff is still in play. The 74 is the. Okay. Miro was thinking beans on that. You're right. Yeah. So this number is going to be interesting actually coming out in beans. Mm -hmm. Man, my head's Looking good here. In and out. I get you a new headset, brother. I just did. I know mine's, mine's ragged out, so I got to get a new one. Come on, puke it. Looking good so far. On that first bump back up, I got in short on that. Oh, nice. Um, to take out that IB, so. So 60 would get us to 1.5, the IB. Say that again, I actually, everything just locked up on me for a second. Oh. That was a hard stopper. I'm like, oh no. Uh -huh. Go to my laptop, start hedging out. <laughs> yeah, six sixty on the uh, is one point five the IB on the extension. Yeah. All right, so boy, they just they just dumped the um, the Russell on that as well. So yeah, I looks like um, eighty one. They're trying to get to at this point. So I will cover everything except one contract down by eighty one there to see if they blow it back through. Um, my stop is just going to be um, the IB at this point um, on that last contract, and I'm that's my trade for the day. So. 70, that's seventy five hundred. Yep. Yep. So I um, yeah I went I went in three this time. So oh, nice. I peeled one at the IB. Um, I just peeled another one here, um, and then I'm waiting for that eighty one. If uh, I'm going to hold that dead eighty one, so I like it. Get that 77. Delta's increasing to the downside. Yeah, I, it would shock me if we don't get that, you know. Of course, you've seen sillier things. Sure. Boys and girls, get down there. Only three points away. So here's what this looks like on this template. And you see we're, we're approaching these two, standard, we're you know hugging the two standard deviation for the session. We're getting close to the one for the week. This is 50% uh, extension of the initial balance gets you down to 60. And and there's, you know, the statistics are that there's about a 30% chance that, you know, on any given day that will exceed that 50 level. So just know if you get past 50, doesn't mean we don't fall out of bed and run to you know, 74, 17. It just means that statistically, that's not that likely. All right, I'm kind of watching this, this last order flow spike lower. Got some more here coming in. I want to see him reject. Oh, come on. All right, this is close enough for me right here, so. Oh, that's good because I was saying I'm, it's looking tasty for the long for me. <laughs> so, so JP is looking the short. I'm looking for the trigger to get in. So, yeah, I'm covering um, all. I, so I have one left. It's in my stops at 75 now. So what am I looking for? A flush. <laughs> mm -hmm. If we don't get the flush and I see buyer step in, I'll just cover everything. Call it a day. Fridays are my there's there's the 70 nice finally yeah. got to that wow. level. new lows yeah I blew through it I blew was looking it. for that okay and now pick order picking uh, order flows picking up to the downside yeah hey guys don't chase anything like this nope. is not the place to sell it in here oh nope. man I'm loving this now go baby go 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 okay so now I'm uh, we're getting extended here so now my stop is I'm 
pulling it down. I'm going to go, we can't get above 84. We struggled at 84. So I'm putting my uh, stop at 85 right now. I don't care if they take me out. Um, I probably should cover in here. I don't want to give up 10 points on this, but um, 85 is enough wiggle room. So if they want to go take another stab at that low. So that's, this is exactly what I was looking for right here. Mm -hmm. But I was looking for a bigger flush maybe. Now on the next move down, if we struggle to take out those lows, I'm just going to hit out of the trade. Yeah, so this is, this is, this is, we're right in the situation where now we're kind of outside those bands. Doesn't mean that we stop, but it's, it's definitely a place of interest to see if this, you know, this impulsive activity should lead to lower prices. And if it doesn't, that's the clue that we've, we've run out of sellers. So I'm kind of, kind of trailing. All right, there's first. a low. Let's see how far they take it down here. Can they take it? Oh, yeah. Keep going, baby. Come on. Treat me well. Almost that 1.5 there at 60. Yeah. But the but the next real good volume level is, is all the way back down at 74.15. So that is totally, I yeah, think, man. I think, you know, absent of any kind of, uh, any kind of news. Um, oh, baby, this is really looking good. Now we have a, man, this is way down there, but at 74.16, we also have a huge gap down there at the fill. Yeah. So that I don't know if we get that today. Um, we got to watch 46 here and um, that's, there's a possibility of a pause there. All right. So now I got to move my stop down here. I'm not going to let this get away from me. Yeah. So 77. Um, yep. Yeah, I'm at 76. So I'm going to run front run you there, brother. Okay. All right. Keep going, man. I wish I had some more contracts. Right. On this. Well, and look, now we're, now we're into that April gap zone. Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, well, patience work today, guys. Um, come on, keep going, keep going. And that that was the one that that uh, we cleaned that up in the ES yesterday. Yeah, there we go. Keep going. Now we're coming in that forty six. Here we got to watch this here. Uh, let me go down. I got to go down to a lower time frame. Find a, a stop here. Man, they're all big, huge stops right now. What's my one minute? Uh, all right, I'm moving it down. I'm gonna move it down to fifty eight right now. I'm just going to trail this thing down. I'm not going to let myself get away from it. 58. There's some buyers there at 46, as I said. Uh, they took it down to 44. So there's a little bit of buying there. I thought they would maybe pause it there for a second. They're going to take me out now. Out. Okay, I'm flat. All right, so let's go through this. Um, get back to my normal here. So when we went down and we formed the IB low there at 50, 75, what was the low on that? 7501. Mm -hmm. On the pullback there, I was able to get involved with the trade at 7516. That's where I, I got in the trade on the, uh, when it started sucking back and, and just didn't show any buyers in the, that candle there. Okay, so 16, I was able to peel some off, trail it down all the way to 58 that's over a thousand dollars or excuse me a thousand dollars on one contract right there my last contract so good trade there um that i that is for one that's a that's a it's not it's not a good trade because it's thousand well it was more than a thousand dollars in my other contracts but what it is a good trade is how we manage that and how we saw it okay so hopefully you guys heard how we we went through we saw that the there was no buyers in there we were breaking it um, we had targets we had we managed the trade well so yeah it's a good trade now typically we don't get trade like that on yeah. Fridays yeah typically we don't on Friday so that's the that makes up for my lack of points yesterday. So is well, that's, here? that's why we've also moved these, these calls earlier on Friday. You know, we were doing these at like yeah. 1 p.m. Eastern and there's just nothing happening. And so yeah. hopefully by doing it earlier, we're finding some stuff. Yeah. Is Joel in here? Um, he is. Yep. Oh, you kicked my butt yesterday. Um, did you get some of that action today? Or was that Cody yesterday? No, it was Cody, Cody yesterday. Cody smoked it. He got, he picked it. Cody. Yeah. Did you get some of this action? Oh yeah. Nice. 2056. I like it. All right, man, look at that, right at the top of that gap zone. 
Jeez, man, you're killing it, Cody. Yeah, he, th that's the – I'm telling you guys, like, this is the – Drinks on Cody. Drinks on Cody. Get, getting your right plan in and having your own approach. Like, you know what to wait for. That's And that's the hardest thing is, like, once you know what to wait for – and that's where, like, when I first started trading, I didn't know what to wait for. So everything seemed like it was worth waiting for. Or everything looked like it was worth being active in, and that's just not the case. Um, all right, so now that we've uh, extended, we're – We've got some shorts. If they can't make another low, if we start, then then now we're in the conditions where I'm looking for that yeah. long back up towards 7,500. Nice, Joel. Joel did had a nice one as well. Holy cow, yeah. that's nice. Um, so guys, you see sort of, if you're watching the NASDAQ, you see why I covered down there. We had a number. Um, I go to higher time frames and look at that stuff. Um, and we looked for that number. We had a, a number at 46. I said, okay, we could pause there to me and we're extended to me. That's okay. Let's tighten this thing up. I don't want to give too much away at this point. And, you know, look at if I would have kept my stop way up above, you know, I would have been given up here. How many points is that now? That's uh, about 20 points. Yeah. I'm not interested in giving up 20 points like that. Nope. Um, so, all right. Good trade guys. Real good trade. So you see here that you know this this is another way to look at you know what you've got over here in the right. Impulsive strong order, you know, flow orders lower so far is not leading to lower prices. So if, if we trade above 77, um, then this low here at 42 is something that we can lean against. And then we can look for you know another period higher um, of additional buying to lean into to tighten the risk even more and look to trade back towards uh, that 7,500 and we get some juice back to 7550. Yeah, um, for me, I want to see it get back inside the IB. Um, yeah. Then I'll, then I'll, if it holds the IB, then I'll look for a move back to the open. Um, yeah. However, uh, it it's going to have to be real convincing yeah. for me at this point. <laughs> well, yeah. Now that now that you've now that you've bagged. Yeah, I, I'm no hurry now to give my money away. So. That's right. So if you want to know what that feels like, um, get your paycheck, get it in pure cash, go out in the side of the street and hand, start handing it to people as they drive by. <laughs> there you go, there you go. And see how good that feels to you. Yeah. Especially when you have bills that are due. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so yeah, I hate to say that that's going to be it for me, but you know what? That's going to be it for me. One, one well and done. done, man. Well done. <laughs> I'm like a uh, – I'm like one of those artists out there that uh, writes one, the one, one and done wonder. songs. Yeah, the one yeah. Wonder. I'm a one hit wonder on a daily basis. <laughs> but I don't, yeah. honestly, guys, this is not the norm. We usually don't get a runner like this. Yeah. Okay. It is not, it's typically you no know, 10, 20 points, and then they roll back and take us out or something like that. And that's NASDAQ speaking, by the way. That's right. So, but you know what? That's good trading too. It's consistent. Thanks, Miro. Not as good as you, brother. I know you got some stuff that you can do as well. So, um, all right. So we're back above that 76. So we're going to see if they can make another push lower that fails. You know, that doesn't make new lows. And then I'll be looking for a swing back towards 7,500. But we're going to land the plane. We're going to go off and uh, do some other stuff. We'll be back next Friday. Um, look for the recording of this to be sent out. And um, if anybody wants those. Uh, the template, just, just let me know. I'll actually, I'll just, I'll add the link to the template in the email that goes out so that you can look at that. And if you have a question about that, just respond back to us. We'll, we'll help you there and hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. And um, here's to uh, world trade peace. <laughs> world <laughs> trade peace. World yeah. Trade peace. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll see what happens on Sunday night. So. Yep. All right, hey, guys. Hey, have a good one. We'll see yep. you. Thanks.